Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here today with Nicola Butler, who's the managing director and owner of Noteworthy. And if you don't know Noteworthy, well, we'll take note. Uh, it will. It is a wonderful uh, company that sells uh, all of Britain and all all things British at a very high end, a very high level and level. And uh, but we're not. Ta- we're going to talk to her a little bit about Noteworthy, but we're really talking about uh, a. a, a an event that's going to take place with select uh, travel advisors in London to really, really bring back a uh, show that London is back and the UK is back. And uh, that is coming up very soon, but this is sort of an important event and that's what we're going to focus on today. But what you'll find about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Nicole, first of all, how are you and where are you? I assume you're somewhere in the UK. Yeah. Hi, James. Yeah. I am back at my house in Surrey. I've been out to, um, I've been into London this morning. Um, It's very hot here, which makes change because we've had a few weeks of cold weather. And so I'm, I'm hot and, but I've I've gone to see, I've got clients in house in London. So I've been at the guard change this morning. Oh, wow. um, Standing inside the parade ground. And it's so amazing to see our, uh, the red tunics and the bearskins and the music, you know, it's all live, lots of people on the streets. Uh, so I've been in to see the clients. So it's, it feels great that there are people in house. No, that's great. And I, it's funny because, you know, we've uh, for those who have been to London, you think, oh, I've seen the changing of the guard before, but you haven't seen it in about two years. So it's, it, it's uh, you know, a great time to go uh, if you're a tourist coming into London. Uh, and sort of get back with the action, get back with the program, so to speak. Uh, now let's talk about this. This uh, what what we're what you're you're going to be doing here in in London. Uh, you, you, what what is the goal for? The, well, first of all, what is this event? What would you call it? Um, so this is really a celebration of London and the UK reopening, um, and really banging that drum that we are open and right. we do have clients in house and visitors in house. Um, and bringing together um, all-time amazing travel advisors to really um, shout that message to um, to their clients. So, how many how many uh, travel advisors do you expect, and and also how many people from the London area in terms of hotels and uh, people like yourself, uh, you know, who do tours and do uh, very high-end tours? What who is going to be at this event? So, well, this, James, I have to tell you this. So this group formed during the pandemic and it was myself and another 12 hotels. And we all just came together, as many people did, you know, just checking in on each other, making sure that we were still um, doing okay. And uh, we all thought, right, this is the time. As soon as we get the green light that we can open, let's do a trip and bring a load of advisors who are, uh, have been, uh, you know, marvellous of um, banging the London drum before, right? And with lots of production and support, let's bring them over and uh, and celebrate and just build that confidence up for people. So, what so, what, are, what are some of the hotels and other partners that uh, helped organise this? Oh, really? It's just um, myself, um, and then the hotels. We've got Browns Hotel, Corinthia, Dorchester. Four Seasons, uh, the Langham, Mandarin Oriental, Claridge's, the Connell, the Barclay, Rosewood London, Shangri-La, the Shard, and the Savoy. And I'll be honest, I did read that list because I can't actually remember. <laughs> I was wondering how you remembered that so well, but that was, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't have said a word. I, I would have been very impressed. I, I am impressed anyway. You've got a very good lineup of some of the best, uh, some of the top luxury hotels uh, in London. And of course, I know our friend Peter Bates from Strategic Vision is also going to be there, right? Yeah, so we came together and I thought that the only person who will, um, will br- you know, he'll bring something to this, to this actual event be- because he's a Brit himself. Right. And so I called Peter and told him what, what I was doing and um, didn't think I'd ever hear from him again. But then um, he, he said, absolutely, he'd love to be involved and he's been such a superstar and driven a lot of the help and organization and bringing people um, to this event. So yeah, so it formed with myself and the hotels. We have Peter involved, um, and then I've uh, brought in uh, all of our noteworthy experiences. So we've got a lot of the directors from the London attractions, from the okay, Garden okay. Museum right through church to the Churchill War Rooms, uh, through to street art, um, 
And then we are, uh, so we have a, an event starting on Friday evening, uh, Friday lunchtime, should I say. And they're starting off with Browns, um, with the guys there, with Stuart Johnson and Nick Seabright, um, and doing a lovely uh, spread at Browns. And then in the evening, we're going off to Claridge's. And I can't tell you anything because I'm going to give away loads of surprises. That's okay, it. So what, what, are, what are the dates, just so we get that clarified? So people are arriving seven, Friday the 17th of September and then departing the 21st of September. And so they're going to be immersed in uh, all things luxury in London, right? Yeah, and they're, they're literally, um, they're staying, I've, I've just done that fun job of hotel allocations this morning and they're staying across the hotels um, doing the noteworthy experiences in the morning and then we have some really special events in the evenings. So I've got them doing cake decorating with the executive chef at the Rosewood. So a few little competitions there, um, right through to, uh, we've got a very special performance by the Coldstream Guards on Saturday evening. Oh, wow. Very, that's, that's amazing. I, I'm very sorry I'm going to miss this. It's, it's, it sounds like an amazing event. Well, and also it's the Coldstream Guards who, who played um, literally the day after the 9-11 attacks. And uh, they were ordered by Her Majesty the Queen to play the Star Spangled Banner. Um, so this is the exact same band that's going to be performing for the Virtuoso Advisors. That's fantastic. Now, let's talk a little bit about your company, Noteworthy. Uh, just to remind us, uh, uh, for those travel advisors who might not be as familiar, obviously a lot of the Virtuoso travel advisors are and other uh, high-end travel advisors, but tell us a little bit about Noteworthy. Noteworthy, well, we celebrated 35 years um, in business this year, and uh, it was founded and started by the late Susie Worthy, I came in 2012 and I bought the business in 2014. Okay. Um, and we really specialize in that, that very high end travel, but for the independent casual luxury traveler. Mm -hmm. So they can come and have a, a half day experience going behind the scenes somewhere with me, right through to a full singing or dancing two to however many weeks they want to stay with us um, across our destinations. And so we specialize in the UK, Ireland, Paris and Normandy. No, that's great. And, and I've known the company for a while, but uh, in particular, I know the very high-end London experiences you offer, and it sounds like that's what you're going to be showcasing uh, at this event. That's great. Now, obviously, you work with all these luxury uh, London hotels and other properties. There, uh, Most of them are going to be there. Uh, what are they, what are you seeing, and what are they seeing in terms of London coming back and the rest of Britain for matter? I mean, uh, you, you did open up, uh, I, I'm, I'm losing track of time now, just a couple months ago I'm, I, I, uh, that England was uh, and, and the UK opened uh, up uh, to Americans. Uh, we, we sadly haven't opened up to you, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but it, it has started and people are going, right? Yeah, we, we opened up, uh, I mean, the hotels, some of the hotels have been open throughout the pandemic right. for um, essential travel. And then it really opened up in May for the UK business and then America um, at the beginning of August. So we've had two, um, you know, we've had one month of travel so far. It's been slow, um, but a progressive improvement um, from month to month since um, right. Right. the opening. Um, and, you know, L London is such a vibrant and dynamic international city. So it's been particularly wonderful to see our North American uh, travellers returning in the past month. Um, talking to their hotel partners, the SDR forecasts have gone from 40 to 48 percent for 22. Right. So, right. you know, it further supports that there's an optimistic rebound for next year. No, that's great. So you, you are seeing bookings for 22 and even into 23 now? Oh, yeah, Jay, I mean, that's, it, the, the 2022 is looking fantastic. I'm five times the amount that I would normally have for mm -hmm. this next year. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's looking very optimistic. Yeah, so that is the proverbial pent-up demand in all its glory, I guess, uh, with everyone wanting to get back to London. They haven't had their fix for uh, at least over a year now, and it's, it's been tough for all of us uh, not to have been there. I think I was supposed to have been in London at least three times in the last uh, year that we've missed. Uh, but I, I, I hope to get back there very soon. Now, um, what, do you, what do you think, what are the barriers to business coming back right now? Uh, is, how easy is it to, right now for Americans to get into Britain? It, it's, it's, it, it's very easy. Um, we have express, express tests by signpost. Right. Um, 
they are kindly supplying uh, all the day to and fit for fly tests for our advisors. So then our advisors can talk about how easy it is. Um, you know, I've just taken a trip to Barcelona and it, and it does fill your mind with goodness, how are you going to get that through this? But actually, once you go through the process, it's actually quite easy. Very simple at the, at the airports. I know Heathrow had a bit of a bad time a couple of weekends ago with, we had flights for British nationals coming back in from Afghanistan, a <laughs> um, bit of, you know, sh star shortage. So that didn't really help Heathrow, but it's back on track now. So once we get the, Ameri the uh, advisors here, they'll see how easy it is. And so what, what, what do you need now? Do you need a, a VAX card, a, a, a test, a, a, a fill out a health declaration form? What is the process? So you just need to take a, a PCR test and put that PCR test uh, in your passenger locator form in right. order to come here. And then you also need to book a PCR test whilst you're here. Got it. Um, and, uh, and then an, uh, an antigen test to, uh, for fit, fit to fly. Yeah, that, well, for the return. Yes, absolutely. Unless you just don't want to go back. Uh, <laughs> that could be a, a possibility too after enjoying yourself in London for a while in the rest of the UK. Uh, now, are you seeing that your, your hotel partners and, and other things, are, are they putting out any kind of new offers? Are they trying, how are they, how are you and them trying to attract uh, more Americans right now and also, you know, talk to their travel advisors, which this obviously is a, is a major effort to do exactly that. But uh, are, are hotels kind of gearing up uh, to, to welcome back Americans and offering them, you know, special deals or amenities? Um, no, I mean, this, this event is a huge focus, obviously, um, but it's the investment that I've seen from the hotels that are really, and putting, you know, putting London as that world-class destination and a safe destination, same language. Um, we, they haven't concentrated on the rates um, because you, the UK has been absolutely packed with domestic business. Oh, right, okay. So um, outside of London, our countryside hotels have seen fantastic occupancy, and that's growing in London. So, so, are you, so you're seeing more people that go London and beyond as well because they want to get out into the countryside, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's one of those. My, I always try to get out into the, into the world there to, to see the rest of, of, of England, the rest of Scotland. Uh, and it has been far too long. Uh, London obviously is a great base and a place to start or end your journey. Uh, but th this is a, a great time to see the rest of the UK as well. Uh, now, in terms of uh, uh, anything else you'd like to tell our audience of about 90,000 travel advisors out there and other industry professionals about uh, what this event is and, and how you hope uh, this is going to help bring back and attract uh, more Americans? Well, this event is really uh, hopefully going to stamp um, and confirm that the UK, along with our other noteworthy destinations, Ireland, Paris, Normandy, and the rest of, the, of Europe are open right. and, um, and help build that confidence. We're, we're receiving inquiries in from families for 2022. So we're hoping that it will um, help increase that confidence um, even further. Now, is there any, are there any events that you're keying on also? Because, I mean, there, there always seem to be events in Britain. I don't know. It seems like every other day they're having to celebrate something. And, and, and the way, you know, the British celebrate things is always true, truly glorious. Uh, is, there, is there anything coming up this fall that we should know about? Uh, well, London Art Freeze is um, on in October. Um, they're looking at 60,000 people over the five days. Um, We've still we've got quite a few inquiries coming in for Thanksgiving and December, and you have to remember that London is completely open and the UK is completely open. There's no face masks, there's no restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I think London will be a great destination for Christmas to revisit all of that, um, and then of course next year um, we have Her Majesty's Platinum Diamond Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So note whether he has various different access points for that. I've got lots of um, inquiries coming in for people who want to be here in London in June next year. No, that's great. So you're going to really, it'll ramp up pretty quickly. It sounds like between the events, between more Americans coming over and realizing it's, it's a great place to go right now. As e e and again, I'm so sorry you can't come here as easily as we can come there. Uh, we I, hope that will, I hope that will change. Uh, when is it going to change? I don't know. Uh, we, we thought it was going to be changed already, but it uh, looks like we're going to have to endure a couple more months. But you know what? 
you want to, you'll benefit from all the tourism dollars going your way, and uh, we'll just have to suffer here not getting any travelers, which is well, uh, rather yeah. ironic. You know, I know. I feel I feel for my colleagues in the, in the states with that that international uh, international dollars not coming in. I mean, one thing that I did do in the pandemic is because no one could travel, so I thought, right, I'll bring travel into the homes of Americans. Right. So I opened up the noteworthy unique treasure shop, which I nicknamed Nuts, and. <laughs> Um, I I have various different accessing the inaccessible collectibles and antiques from here in the UK and Ireland and France that you just can't buy on the online shop shelf or physical shop shelf. So um, it was a way to connect with clients. It was a way to connect with our advisors. Um, our advisors had commission in all the sales, mm-hmm. so they were getting income. So um, we're hoping to get that ready up, ready for, uh, for December again this year. And we sold a, a bronze Churchill hand for 36000 Wow, that's amazing. We sold a diamond tiara for £1.8 million. So <laughs> there's, it, it's, people still want that little bit of UK and Ireland in their homes if they can't travel, you know. That's great. Well, of course, during during the pandemic, a lot of travel advisors were looking for other sources of uh, revenue, and so uh, it, the fact that you made it commissionable, they're suddenly uh, commission commissionable uh, antique dealers, I guess, or, or or collectibles, right? Absolutely, yeah, of, of fine travel objects, really. So yeah, no, the the advisors were very happy with the commission that they received. That's great. Now, where can uh, advisors go to learn a more about your company, uh, Noteworthy, and uh, anything else about this event? So uh, we partnered with Virtuoso, um, and I should say that we are celebrating 20 years being a Virtuoso member next year. Congratulations. And so we are on the virtuoso.com website and also noteworthy.co.uk. No, that's great. In fact, and and last year was supposed to be the uh, 20th anniversary of the naming, the renaming of Virtuoso. Uh, And I was actually supposed to be in Vienna. Uh, and now I'm still hoping uh, there's a, a conference right now for Virtuoso Symposium uh, scheduled for Vienna in October, crossing our fingers, and uh, we'll see if that takes place. I, 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 last I talked to Matthew Upchurch, the CEO, uh, it was going ahead as planned, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully, maybe I'll come back uh, via, uh, via London and uh, see, see what is happening in your way now. You should do. If not, I will see you in Vienna for a, a beer. Absolutely. We'll have a beer or two. Absolutely. After this year, we need a beer or two. I tell you. <laughs> Nicola, I want to thank you for taking the time. Good luck with this event. It sounds like an amazing way to uh, showcase London and, and beyond into the UK uh, and also showcase your many hotel partners and uh, get people selling, uh, getting back to selling. But it does sound also that encouraging news that uh, you're seeing good bookings for next year and uh, as we expected. Um, but you know, we always get this fits and starts, you know, everything seems to be going well and then there's a little bad news and then you kind of have to back off a bit, but I think we're on the right path now. So we'll see what happens. I just, I just hope, I think because London, you know, here in the UK, we had such a longer lockdown. So I'm hoping that will give us, you know, put us in good stead to, to stay open and, um, keep welcoming people. Absolutely. And that's what we want to. And I, I really want to get over there. As I said earlier, uh, I, I miss London. It's been too long. Uh, I don't I haven't got my London fix in in over uh, 18 months or whatever it is. And I was supposed to be there three times already. So uh, we'll hopefully this later this year we'll get back again. Nicola, thank you so much, uh, and good luck with the event, and and good luck with with uh, the future travelers coming to uh, London and beyond. Thanks for having me, James. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.